Hi, everybody. Um, it's almost Halloween, and every Saturday of this month, I'm gonna be reading. Uh, I'm gonna be reading. Uh, oops. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna be reading some Halloween books. Um, yeah, starting today. This one I'm gonna read today. It's called "A Visit to the Haunted House." I got this book a long time ago. I think I got it in kindergarten. I think. Hey, it's a pop-up. <laughs> like, uh, Master of Disguise. Hey, it's a pop-up. Tommy Tribble lived in a little town called Lispestiza. One day, he called his friend, Stephanie Pepper, who lived in Sassafras. Let's go fly my new kite up by Halfway House, said Tommy. Halfway House was a big old spooky house set on a, a high hill halfway between the two towns. Everyone said it was haunted, but because strange noises were heard there every night. Okay, said Stephanie. It's the best place to fly a kite, but it's not. But let's not go too close to the house. The two friends met at the top of the hill. The wind was so strong that both Tommy and Stephanie had to hold on to the string. Suddenly, snap! The string broke, and the kite sailed right into an open window of the haunted house. Oh no, cried Tommy. We'll have to go in and get my kite. But it's getting dark, and I'm scared, said Stephanie. That kite is brand new. Besides, there is no such thing as ghosts, said Tommy. He took Stephanie's hand as they walked up to the house. The old door was covered with musty, dusty spider webs. Just then, the door opened all by itself. Yeah, it's a pop up. <laughs> Let's go, screamed Stephanie. This place really is haunted. But Tommy said, no, come on, silly. It's only the wind, and I want to find my kite. So the two of them held on tight to each other's hand and crept bravely through the doorway. As soon as they were inside the horrible house, even before their eyes grew, uh, even before their eyes grew used to the darkness of the gloomy room, boom! The door slammed shut behind them, and the bolt fell into place, as if, almost as if an invisible hand had locked it. I want to go home, cried Stephanie. Me too, but I can't lift this bolt. It's too heavy. Just then, the children heard a flip, flip, flap, flip, flapping sound. They looked up and saw a bunch of black furry bats flying right at them. This way, yelled Tommy as he pulled Stephanie after him as he ran away from the vampire bats. But those creepy creatures chased the children farther into the haunted house, past cobweb-covered caskets, through dark halls with clammy walls, and up a creaky, squeaky flight of stairs. As the children began climbing the rickety old staircase, they heard, a, they heard rattling chains and farther away the sound of fiendish laughter. Then it became very, very quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> All of a sudden, a panel on the wall flew open and out popped a skull. Glockety clatter, it went tumbling down the stairway. <laughs> Where is my head? No, wait. Tommy and Stephanie turned and ran as fast as they could away from the terrible sight. But as they turned a corner in the door hallway, they ran right into a skeleton without any head. Where is my head? The skeleton said. My bones can't rest without a head. Poor Stephanie. Poor Tommy. They were too frightened to say a word. So they ran on, away from the scary skeleton, down the hideous hall, and up another fearful flight of stairs. At the top of the stairs, they saw a door marked this way out, but just as Tommy reached for the knob, whoosh, look, a trap door opened beneath them, and they were tumbling down, down, down through a long, dark tunnel, and Tommy and Stephanie landed kerplunk in a room full of ghosts. <laughs> The grinning ghosts were flying around the room, twisting and turning and moaning and groaning. Tommy's eyes were as big as saucers, 
Stephanie was as white as a sheet. They had to find a way out. Any way out. The ghost kept forcing them back, back against the wall. And as they leaned against the wall, a very strange thing happened. A secret panel began to open. It was a hidden door they had found by accident. And on the other side, they saw... I wonder what they saw. A funny little man operating lots of strange machines. Oh no, please don't hurt me, cried the little man. I'm sorry for scaring you. Please forgive me. What is this anyway, asked Tommy. Have you been fooling us? Well, uh, you see, you might say, Yes, I've been fooling you, stammering the little man in a shy, squeaky voice. But why? cried Tommy and Stephanie. Because I was afraid, sobbed the little man, as he broke down and cried and cried. Tommy and Stephanie rushed to his side. There, there, said Stephanie. Please don't cry. We forgive you. We want to be your friends. Yes, said Tommy. We want to help you. Please tell us why you wanted to scare us. Well, you see, I'm very shy, said the poor little man as he dried his eyes. My name is Mr. Bashfellow. I'm afraid of people, so I decided to build all these machines to make people think this house is haunted. I have ghost machines, skeleton machines, bat machines, scream machines, just every kind of creepy machines imaginable. <laughs> it's a good book. I've been reading this book for years. Well, you sure fooled us, said Tommy. Just then he saw his kite. Hey, there's my kite. May I have it, please? Of course, you know, I'm really very glad it blew in here. You're the first guest I've ever had, and you're really very nice. Everybody's nice, says Stephanie. At least everybody in Sassafras and Lespediza as nice as you? Oh, yes, said Tommy. Well, I've been, well, I've just never been around people before. I thought they were all horrid and mean. Certainly not, said Stephanie. Listen, I have a great idea, cried Tommy. I'll bet you could sell tickets to this haunted house. Lots of people from Sassafras and Lipitiza would come. To be scared? asked Mr. Bushfellow. It's fun to be scared when you know it's just pretend, said Stephanie. It would be nice to have... More friends like you, said Mr. Bashfellow, as a happy blush spread over his face. I think it's a wonderful idea. And the very next day, Mr. Bashfellow, with some help from his new friends, opened the halfway house of happy horrors. And to this very day, people from Sassafras and Lespediza and lots of other places think it's a treat to go there for thrills and chills. Everybody, Everyone likes Mr. Bashwell, and he thinks the world of everybody, especially his very best friends, Tommy Dribble and Stephanie Pepper. Oh, is it? Yeah, I've been reading this book for a long time. I got it when I was in kindergarten or first grade. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Tune in next Saturday. I'm going to read a very scary ghost story. Yeah. You can comment down below what you like to do on on Halloween. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. And I'll see you later. Bye.